A secret city built into the side of a mountain. It has its own lake. It has sidewalks. It has shops. It has a railway. A cavernous control room hidden 16 stories beneath Central Park. It's a project that takes as long as one of the ancient pyramids using contemporary technologies. And a subterranean rail system that runs coast to coast. Is it possible to have an underground maglev system? Absolutely. Americans may be aware of what's above ground, but do they know what's concealed beneath? The explosion was so large that people thought an airplane had crashed into their neighborhood. No one even knew that a pipeline was running through their community. And is there a reason why so much that is below ground remains a secret? What our government and big industries are doing, there's a whole lot they don't want us to know. There are those who believe in the existence of a book. A book that contains the most highly guarded secrets of the United States of America. A book whose very existence is known to only a select few. But if such a book exists, what would it contain? Secret bases? Secret transports? Secret vaults? Does there really exist America's Book of Secrets? Bowling Green, Kentucky, February 12, 2014. A mammoth sinkhole opens up under the National Corvette Museum, swallowing eight vintage and rare race cars whole. Among those lost, a 1993 ZR1 Spider, a 1984 PPG pace car, and a 1962 black Corvette. One of the most dramatic things that's happened in the United States low ground is the appearance of these massive sinkholes. These are the size of multiple football fields. They swallow entire houses, entire towns at some points. People are really freaked out about sinkholes because if you were sitting in your living room and you heard this rumbling noise, you heard your dog howling before it disappeared into a hole in your backyard, that would freak you out too. In 2013, sinkholes made headlines across the country for swallowing people, cars, and even a building at a resort in Florida. In fact, the number of sinkhole claims to Florida insurance companies tripled from 2006 to 2010. The frightening trend makes many wonder, what could be causing the sudden proliferation of sinkholes? Could a vengeful mother nature be behind the recent outbreak? Or might it be something else? We've got Swiss cheese under our country. This is a problem, and this is not a natural problem. This is a problem because we're messing around with things we shouldn't be messing around with. Assumption Parish, Louisiana, August 3rd, 2012. A massive sinkhole opens up right under the town that eventually grows to over 20 acres wide and 750 feet deep. 350 residents are forced to evacuate in order to save their lives. It is one of the most disruptive and costly sinkholes yet to be reported in the United States. After a thorough investigation, authorities blame the sinkhole on a collapsed underground salt dome operated by Texas Brine Company. Geologists point to the collapse as one of the consequences of a method called undermining, a process where underground excavation erodes the foundation of bedrock. Man-made sinkholes occur all the time. Something has to cause them. A 
common form of a man-made sinkhole is related to mining. There's lots of areas that have been undermined, and over time, those mines collapse, and this void migrates to the surface and forms a sinkhole. Picture the foundations of your house. It's held up by pillars, by concrete, by the earth that's happening there. What we're doing is basically messing with all of that. And when you do that, especially in geologically sensitive areas, it can have disastrous consequences. With reports of sinkholes on the rise and Americans fearful of where they might strike next, more people than ever are focusing on just what is or isn't underground. The fact is, beneath America lies a mammoth infrastructure. Experts say underground are 2.5 million miles of pipelines, including 182,000 miles for hazardous liquid and 2,145,000 miles for gas distribution and transmission. Also hidden, 19 million miles of fiber optic cables installed in 2011 alone. Americans would definitely be shocked if they knew how much of the uh, urban infrastructure was underground. All infrastructure, sewer lines, water lines, gas lines, fiber optic cables, it's primarily put underground for security purposes. It's very safe. It's also out of sight, out of mind. There are many secret things underground. By its very definition, Things that are underground are typically hidden. When we want to hide things, underground's a good place to put them. So that's why we often put utilities and ugly pipelines and cables and things like that underground. There's not a lot of people that know what really happens underground and what's down there. Americans might not know about the hidden structures beneath their feet, but as more and more large projects move underground, like the massive Keystone XL oil pipeline, their scope and scale affect even more citizens every day, whether they want them to or not. The Keystone XL pipeline has been a real fight about who owns the land and who gets to determine what's gonna happen on it. TransCanada, the company that's trying to build this project, has taken over 30 families and ranchers and farmers to court. And so a lot of people are really concerned that while they may own the property above ground, uh, they don't have a right to stop the type of industrial development below ground. So there are a lot of fights underway right now about trying to block these companies from using eminent domain and other ways to take the land from people. Many now worry that the growing number of structures built underground could have unintended consequences in the future. It stands to reason that as our population increases, our demand for service increases. There is no doubt that we have more and more and more stuff going underneath our feet, underneath our country. There's no question about it. A lot of people are concerned that the activities of industry and government are causing more issues. Undoubtedly, some of that has got to be true. Some experts believe the infrastructure we put underground could cause problems above ground to skyrocket. In fact, not only could what we put underground be destructive to private and public property, it could also prove to be downright deadly. San Bruno, California, September 9th, 2010. A 30-inch diameter leaky gas pipeline explodes. Just two miles west of San Francisco International Airport, eight people are killed in the blast. I remember seeing the giant cloud of smoke over the city skyline. It created 300-foot-high flames into the air. The explosion was so large that people thought a airplane had crashed into their neighborhood. And the most amazing thing about it was no one even knew that a pipeline was running through their community. People had no idea that there had been a leaky pipeline underneath their property, and even the companies didn't really know because they don't monitor it. 
we need a much better idea of what's actually happening below our feet. There's a lot of speculation that these things are caused from activities of industry. Builders, big developments, who knows what. The reality of it is we're never going to find out because if that is what's causing it, there is so much money being made that they're not going to stop. Some may ask, why put such a vast network, so important for society's day-to-day -day functions, underground? When it comes to what our government and our big industries are doing, there's a whole lot they don't want us to know. And there's probably some decent reasons why we just really shouldn't be discussing it out in the open. National security, industrial security. There is no question in my mind at all that there is a whole lot more going on under there that we don't know about than there is that we do know about. America's vast underground can offer protection, security, but above all, secrecy. And there are some who believe that buried deep beneath our soil lies a clandestine rail system, but not one that secretly transports people across town, but across the entire nation. The New York City subway is the largest underground transit system in America, moving over two million people a day. The network covers over 840 miles of track alone, enough to make two round trips from the Big Apple to Washington, D.C. and back, and contains 468 subway stations. But the growing city's subway lines are packed to capacity. So New York's Metropolitan Transit Authority, or MTA, is adding a new subway line that will run underneath 2nd Avenue for eight miles. How will the city complete this underground feat of engineering? With a massive tunnel boring machine, or TBM. They're large machines that we put in the ground that basically have a circular disc in the front that allows you to excavate the ground and build a tunnel or a pipe behind that machine. The largest tunnel boring machines are over 60 feet tall and 400 feet long. They can dig through anything from sand to bedrock. But some believe that the use of these machines may also provide evidence of secret government transportation projects, projects far more ominous than any subway expansion line. If someone were to come across one at a military installation, that would make you wonder, what are they doing? Well, obviously what they're doing is they're digging underground, hidden bunkers, and or trainways, or who knows what. Tunnel boring machines make huge underground areas. For instance, under Edwards Air Force Base, uh, there's huge areas there uh, that are tunneled out. There's other underground rail systems that connect the different Air Force bases. They connect uh, Edwards Air Force Base with China Lake, Nellis, Area 51, uh, Groom Lake, and then out to New Mexico, a facility called Dulce there, and uh, connect all those. Are there really underground transport systems that have been kept hidden from the American public? Some suspect that not only do hidden underground rail systems connect various army bases, but that there also exists a covert rail system used coast to coast to ferry government officials in times of crisis. The main one that I found out about belong to the U.S. Navy. The base of it was in San Diego. It was reached by going down to the submarine pens, and there was a tracked system with cars on it that somehow you could get in these vehicles and be anywhere in a matter of minutes. The tube system is a sort of maglev type of operation. Maglev refers to magnetic levitation. 
If you put two magnets together, they repel one another. So the train is lifted off the tracks, and then it can be used to propel the train. Is it possible to have an underground maglev system? Absolutely. We have underground subways. Trains are evolving every day. The technology is growing. I don't see why one day we couldn't have underground maglev systems. Perhaps government officials aren't just using a secret underground rail system. Some believe they could also be covertly traveling underwater by submarine. In the middle of the Nevada desert sits Walker Lake. The body of water supports a strange curiosity, a naval undersea warfare training center. Critics wonder, why place an undersea warfare center right in the middle of the desert? It's very odd to have a naval center out in the middle of the desert. What are they doing there? Unless there's a lot of deep water um, that, that we don't know about, that lake wouldn't be sufficient to really train Navy SEALs, you know? So there's, so there's gotta be something else to that that we don't know about. And I suspect that there is. Could the lake be hiding a secret? One that allows for clandestine transport underwater? The story is that it's essentially like a bottomless lake that runs all the way to the coastline near Santa Cruz. Some believe that Walker Lake actually allows military submarines to travel from the coastline near Santa Cruz through this underground tunnel filled with water and then to surface in the vicinity of Walker Lake. In other words, this would allow military submarines to travel from the Pacific secretly deep under the land and then surface somewhere in Walker Lake. It's far from the coastline. The Navy transports uh, all kinds of things that they don't want us to know about. Warheads, all kinds of munitions. Many people ask how I got all this information as far as the Hawthorne underground that came from uh, people that worked there that felt that that should be in the public domain. While some believe the government is using underwater passages for transport, others agree that authorities are hiding a secret water chamber underneath a city of eight million people. Could its secret location be so valuable that tampering with it might lead to riots, bloodshed, and even death? City, Manhattan Central Park. Over 35 million people a year visit this national historic landmark to escape the city's hustle and bustle. But buried 16 stories beneath the park lies a secret. One that the city's government keeps hidden to avoid it falling into the wrong hands. People like to store things underground because it is safe, it's secure, it's difficult to access, and they can control who is available to uh, visit these facilities. What is the mysterious entity under the park that thousands unknowingly pass over every day? Officials say it is a brand new, massive water tunnel mechanical room, nicknamed the Batcave. The mechanical room controls the city's new water tunnel, number three. Fire in the hole. This is the biggest project New York has ever tried to accomplish. It's far bigger than the Empire State Building. Bigger than the Brooklyn Bridge. Bigger than the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, both of which set records when they were constructed. It's a project that takes as long as one of the ancient pyramids using contemporary technology and techniques. The project dates back to the 1950s, when city leaders realized New York City's water supply couldn't keep up with a rapidly growing population. 
The city's fresh water traveled from reservoirs 120 miles upstate, flowing through two massive water tunnels. But even that wasn't enough. New Yorkers consume, on average, about 142 gallons per day per person. That includes water that we're drinking, showering, and you know, running the dishwasher, as well as industrial uses. But not only was the city's water supply becoming more scarce, the existing two water tunnels were becoming less and less reliable. They've been leaking pretty catastrophically, but you can't shut them down for even a day because then you'll have giant sections of New York that are going without water. And that's a horrendous health hazard that can be catastrophic. So city water tunnel number three is gonna do, it's gonna distribute more water, it's gonna do it more effectively throughout the five boroughs, and it's gonna finally allow us to do maintenance on the earlier two. The cavernous 60-foot high chamber beneath the park will help control the flow of the new water tunnel to the thirsty metropolis. But park goers would be hard pressed to find the chamber's entrance. The city has tried to keep people uh, away from the city water tunnel number three, except the people who are directly concerned with building it. But why is the entrance to the chamber secretly hidden somewhere in the middle of Central Park? Those are considered to be really sensitive command centers for the water supply, and they keep the actual position secret. They're trying to prevent any bad guys, essentially, from being able to screw with New York's water supply, because if our water supply were to get cut off, uh, it, would, it could be devastating. Just how devastating would it be if the city that never sleeps had its water tunnels compromised? If the fresh water supply was compromised in some way, people dump some kind of chemicals or poisons or other things into the water supply, a lot of people will get very sick and they will die. Another type of attack might be where the water supply is just shut off. So uh, you don't get sick, you, you get highly dehydrated. One of our only emergency water supplies in the city limits would be the small lake in Central Park. Now that looks like a lot of water. The lake is about 40 feet deep. It's somewhere around a billion gallons of water, but that's less than one day of water for New York City. The city of New York would be drastically thirsty within one day, period. If in some way the valve chambers got damaged by bad guys, that would be just about the most crippling blow that could be dealt to New York City's infrastructure. If New York City's water supply were to be cut off or contaminated, experts worry that entire neighborhoods could be destroyed by chaos and anarchy, crippling whole communities from within. People just take what they want from the food stores, hardware stores, and whatever. And when those are cleaned out, there's still plenty of people left who don't have food or weapons, and they band together, and you get reduced back to survivalism. Ultimately, in the end, the, the iron rule is to you have to survive. But while officials worry about terrorists breaching our underground infrastructure, could they already be here? living next door to us after sneaking through an elaborate tunnel system at America's borders. Nogales, Arizona, February 14, 2014. Federal authorities confiscate 46 pounds of marijuana and a half a pound of heroin inside a small home along the U.S. and Mexico border, leading to the immediate arrests of three suspects. But investigators are more shocked by what they find beneath the home, a 481-foot drug smuggling tunnel the longest ever discovered in the Nogales area. This super tunnel has its own wood shoring, electric lighting, and ventilation system. 
and stretches longer than one and a half football fields. But the Nogales Tunnel is just the latest found in a massive network of underground smuggling tunnels discovered along the United States border. Those tunnels are used for transporting illegal materials, drugs, money, weapons, even human assets, prostitution, human trafficking. In Nogales, Arizona, there have been over about 270 tunnels discovered in the last five years alone. And then come up 30 feet into houses, bowling alleys, churches, come up into kids' bedrooms below stoves, behind refrigerators, entryways, and even dog houses out in the yard. Traditionally, backpackers would simply hike across the border under the cover of darkness to bring contraband into the U.S. But in 1982, when Ronald Reagan declared a war on drugs, trafficking moved underground. The tunnels started sprouting up in the late 1980s, and they were makeshift, if you will. They weren't engineered properly. They caved in a lot, and a lot of people lost their lives in these tunnels. Tighter security measures above ground started to change the nature of underground tunnel smuggling. In 1996, President Bill Clinton ordered an increase of foot patrols to secure the U.S. border with Mexico. And in 2006, President George W. Bush signed into law the Secure Fence Act, which mandated the construction of 700 miles of reinforced fencing. The southwest border has undergone tremendous change. There are stretches of the fencing that's been completely modernized, and there are stretches where non-existent fencing, primary fencing and secondary fencing, is now in place. A super tunnel today is quite different from a tunnel from the 80s. They come equipped with their own lights and a transportation system or a rail system. Some of them we've even seen that they have elevators, uh, they have telephone lines. These secret tunnels aren't just architecturally complex, they're also built over an inordinate amount of time. You've got an extremely labor-intense process. This is a process that can take up to a year to construct one of these things. But just who would invest so much time and money to build something so secret? Drug cartels mainly are behind the tunneling systems. You have to have a strong financial structure in place to fund these type of operations. With drug cartels fixated on their bottom line, homeland security experts worry about a horrific looming possibility. What if Mexican cartel leaders secretly teamed up with terrorist organizations to use their tunnels for even more sinister purposes? Could greedy cartel lords be bribed by terrorist organizations, allowing them to bring unthinkable carnage to the United States? Worst case scenario would be uh, any terrorist coming to the United States with some kind of weapons of mass destruction or some biological weapon that we're not aware of, and it affects uh, hundreds of thousands of U.S. citizens. It's definitely a possibility. Money supports both organizations. Uh, the terrorists need money to operate. The drug smugglers need money to uh, buy more drugs and keep their business afloat. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security considers this scenario a valid threat. And as the tunnels have evolved, officials have attempted to stay one step ahead of the cartel's game. By using the latest sophisticated technology to detect movement underground. Here we are two approaching three again. Make that three. There are cameras, there are drones, there's satellites, there's sonar equipment that's used. 
There are ground sensors using uh, seismic waves to detect underground movement by looking at cavities that might be underground. Technology has helped authorities destroy secret subterranean spaces, but could it also help to build them as well? There are some who believe that government has access to technology that is so advanced that it has allowed them to create entire cities underground. September 11th, 2001. As the twin towers of Manhattan crumble to the ground and the Pentagon burns in Virginia, chaos reigns in the capital. Could the US government itself be under assault? As President Bush is flown from a speaking engagement in Florida to Andrews Air Force Base, some suspect the Secret Service, following protocol for continuity of government, decides to put Vice President Dick Cheney on a secret aircraft. Its destination is known to only a select few, but some experts assert the chopper is headed to a clandestine location 48 miles from Washington, D.C., and buried deep underground. In the event that something goes so catastrophically wrong that the government can no longer operate, there's a, a safe haven. Many believe the safe haven the vice president was flown to is a little known site called Mount Weather. Mount Weather is one of the most impressive underground installations in the United States. It's roughly 46 miles from Washington, D.C. It's highly protected, and for that reason alone, I wouldn't recommend anybody tries to intrude upon the facility. When I interview the movers and shakers, the senators, the governors, they all know about Mount Weather in Virginia. You haven't heard about it? That's because when a mic is on or a camera is on, they're not allowed to talk about it. Mount Weather is essentially an underground city. Kind of imagine something like in a James Bond movie, what the typical supervillain would live in. Unofficially, Mount Weather is an underground shelter and command center to be used in the event that the United States is engaged in an all-out war. There's a very good reason why Mount Weather is located so close to Washington, D.C. In the event of a national emergency, the president and all his staff could be taken to Mount Weather to allow for some continuation of government. In case the government needs to shelter officials for an extended period of time, some believe Mount Weather is purposefully laid out like a city that could be inhabited for months or even years. It has its own lake, which allows for uh, pure, fresh water all the time. It can house literally tens of thousands of people for months. It has sidewalks, it has shops, it has a railway, it has an air conditioning system. And most important of all, because Mount Weather is designed to protect the president, it's highly fortified below ground. Mount Weather has this gigantic steel door that will pretty much withstand anything including a nuclear attack. If Mount Weather really serves as an underground command center where people could live for an extended amount of time, could there be other secret cities that our government is trying to hide? It would make a great deal of sense for there to be a Mount Weather on the west coast, in the middle of the country, the north and the south. Some experts declare that there exists another, even bigger Mount Weather. Not under a mountainside, but shockingly, right underneath the Denver International Airport. When the Denver Airport was first constructed, the conspiracy theories began. One of the main reasons was because the project to build it actually massively overran in terms of time. And in terms of budget, some suggested that this money had been kind of siphoned off to build this secret underground facility. 
When they were building that airport, there was this massive, and I mean massive, hole in the ground. And buildings were going up in there, buildings that all of a sudden, you know, you, you didn't see them when the airport was finished. And their answer to that was, well, the buildings were incorrect, and we had such a big hole, we just covered them over and kept building. Well, who would buy that? People that get into this stuff, they think that underneath Denver International Airport is a Mount Weather times 10, a Mount Weather on steroids. Remember the Planet of the Apes? In the second movie, beneath the Planet of the Apes, there's a whole human subterranean existence. That's what the Denver airport is. Madness up above, but the elites have a place to gather. If you're gonna hide something underground, what better place to do it than under a huge airport, kind of out in the middle of nowhere, away from a city? An airport is an extremely secure location on the surface. You can't just walk in and go anywhere you want. It's absolutely controlled airspace. And from a satellite perspective, there's not a whole lot to see. That's a really, really good place to hide. I'd probably put it under an airport too. Some wonder what could happen if a large scale attack was ever executed against the United States. Even if some survived, in underground bunkers. What would become of America's culture, history, art, and people? There are many who believe that the answer can be found underground, in a vault that stores data on every single American who ever lived. Little Cottonwood Canyon, Utah, 15 miles southeast of Salt Lake City. Deep inside a mass of solid rock known as Granite Mountain lies a secret vault protected by steel doors that can withstand a nuclear blast. The vault is run by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a religious faith also known as the Mormons. The Mormon vault, or often called the Granite Mountain Vault or the Granite Vault, is an enormous structure. They bore into the side of this mountain about 600 feet, dug it out, and they built a number of structures in their vaults. Three external doors, one of them is a 14-ton door, and the other two are nine tons. Some might question, why would a religious group need a secret vault all of its own? The answer is unbelievable to some. The vault is stacked with rows upon rows of genealogical data saved on microfilm. In the 1950s, the church began to search for a safe place to store its collection and ultimately chose the underground site at Granite Mountain. They had this idea, if they go underground and they build big enough doors in front of this, this basically makes this nuclear bomb proof. And why would the Mormon church build an underground vault that could survive a nuclear war? Some religious experts say the answer lies in the Mormon belief system of how souls are rewarded in the afterlife. Mormonism's founder, Joseph Smith, believe that a person's soul could be converted to Mormonism after death through a process called baptism by proxy. They have what they call proxies, which are stand-ins, people that are worthy of taking part in the rituals. They do a full immersion into a pool of water and they read the names of the dead during this ritual. I baptize you for the behalf of Teresia Bartzik, who is dead, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. How do Mormons come up with a list of the dead to baptize? by an extensive, secretive collection of genealogical records. They've got census records, they've got birth records, baptism records, wherever they can find records of people with names and dates. But the ultimate goal truly is to get records of everybody. The church has even discovered a creative way to get people to volunteer information 
that helps them catalog every human being who has ever lived on the planet. They have a free website, familysearch.org, where you can go on and you can start to trace your genealogy and you can fill in details and they will help you. There's a question on there when you set this up that asks, are you a member of the church? If you don't get to click that button, if you're not a member of the church, then you don't get any of the additional information that's kind of really the true motivation for why they're doing this. Mormons get to see who the work has been done for. Everybody else gets to use this just to trace their ancestry. Where does all this genealogical data end up? According to the Mormons themselves, millions upon millions of records eventually find their way to microfilm that is then stored in the Mormon vault. In the end, they want to go through this ritual of posthumous baptism. They want to do this baptism by proxy. So even if there's an apocalypse, Mormons can continue on doing what they want to do there. Even after the destruction of every living person in America, a safe haven underground could allow the church to take care of the world's souls. If there really were an America's Book of Secrets, I think they would reveal that there's far more going on underground than really anybody realizes. Could America's network of underground infrastructure be the answer to mankind's problems? Or might we be paving the way to our own destruction? Are we creating such a vast network of hidden tunnels, vaults, and chambers under our feet that they are destined to collapse and take us with them? <laughs>